later in this episode. Uh, in the past, when like hard times happen, like you know, you deal with it, you process it, but then you're like, okay, well, you got to move on. Can't stay here forever. But I didn't realize that moving on is not the same as healing yep. from it. Hello and welcome to today's podcast. My name is Austin and I am here with a co-host today, Kelly. Kelly, say hi to the people. Hey, everybody. <laughs> thanks Kelly. for having me on, Austin. Yes, thanks for being here, Kelly. Glad to be here. Uh, we have a very special guest for today's episode. Uh, and we are going to be talking about the subject of brave and being brave and, and, and when things are uncertain, still believing to trust in God and step into his goodness. Uh, we are joined here today by our guest, Sarah. Sarah, say hello to the people. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> All right. So we are so excited for today's episode. Uh, and and Sarah's just going to share a bit of her journey and what that looks like um, in her life and, and where the Lord has kind of taken her and in seasons of uncertainty and seasons of doubt, just continuing to pursue him and step into bravery. So uh, Sarah, share a little bit with us today. Uh, where do you want to start on this journey of just bravery and, and what that, what that mean, word, what does that word mean to you? Um, so this all started around August okay. and it was really about taking next steps and listening to God. And mm -hmm. um, when he said something, even though it was a little scary and unknown, just being brave to say yes and see what he has yeah. for me for there. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. So bravery was a word for part of, of last year, uh, 2023. Mm -hmm. um, so what what made that word stick out to you? Like where, where were you? What were you kind of walking through that mm -hmm. bravery became that word for you? Yeah. So I didn't exactly know that that was going to happen um, in the fall of 2023, but really it started in August of 2023. Um, at church, we were in a series called Revival, and um, and one of the Sundays, PC talked about being all in and going all in, and um, I raised my hand that day to go all in, and um, ironically, but totally God, that week is also when I started Freedom Group um, mm. for the first time, and so that also was a scary but brave next step for me. Um, I felt um, called to do that, but also was a little bit terrified of it um, just because, you know, I felt this feeling as well um, a couple years ago when I started a health journey and becoming healthier. It's like the feeling of what if this changes my whole life? Yeah. But at mm -hmm. the same time, like you want it to, but you don't know what that other Sarah is going to look like. Yeah. Um, and so I, that Sunday, I kind of journaled about it and I'd like to share that journal entry if that's okay. Yeah. Um, just kind of my prayer for it. Cause then you'll see as I share my story, how God just totally answered it and beyond expectation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's your, it's your journal entry. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to give you the, hey, we're, is it okay if you share it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, this was August 27th, 2023. Uh, today was week two of our revival sermon and the end of 21 days of prayer. It was so good. It was about being marked by the presence of God, and we are transformed. Um, when we are transformed by God's presence, it should make, um, make us stand apart, set apart for Christ. PC said, what would happen if you give one year of all in, mm. give your everything, grow you, grow the church? I raise mm. my hand to be all in. Help it be so, Lord. May I not get distracted, but help me lean in and to be all in. I also start Freedom Group this week, and I think between the all-in mindset and what Freedom Group will stir, you have some really great things ahead for me, Lord. Mm. And I'm excited, but also nervous in a good way. <laughs> um, <laughs> growth is stretchy. Please help me stay committed and stay hungry for you and your presence, Lord. Help me stay humble and keep my heart open. Please help me not miss what you have for me, Lord. Thy will be done. And really, that was wow. the prayer for the whole wow. fall. And God just exceeded yeah. that prayer. I didn't know what was happening, but I knew I had to be brave and take that next step. Yep. Our listeners, they don't really know you, so they, they probably don't have context for like what you were like before. But describe how you felt before making that decision. So mm. like, what was your internal journey like um, to, to go to a place of brave? Like that's stepping out of your comfort zone. So how would you like just describe yourself before that decision? Um, I think that there was just a lot of fear that held me back mm -hmm. um, and uncertainty and just kind of things that would play in my head. Like, 
oh, like you can't do that. Or if you do that, like it's not going to make it mm. make an impact. Um, so kind of, and I, that's what uh, I think prevented me from doing freedom for the couple years before that yeah. victory had offered it. Um, I just wasn't sure what that looked like. And I was not brave enough to do it. Also, I think it just wasn't the right spot because when I decided to do it in the fall of 2023, like it was on my heart to do it. And I, even though I was scared, I listened to God yeah. that time and said, I'm going to say a scared but brave yes to this yeah. and see what you have in store. Yeah. And freedom is that way kind of like you really don't know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. So for our listeners, freedom is a curriculum that's uh, 12 weeks long uh, and then it ends with a multi-day conference. Um, and that curriculum, like, I remember when I did it, mm. uh, I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. Like, they were like, what, what is this? And I was like, oh, well, this is kind of what it is. This is what I thought it was. This is what I thought it wasn't. And this is what happened. Uh, but I was like, I, don't, I didn't know what it was. Uh, but what it was, I thought it was like um, a self, like, I, I don't know, a self-help group or like some sort of therapy group. And I was like, ah, I don't need that. I'm good. Uh, group in the church. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, and then when I was walking through it, like, freedom is all about, like, looking into yourself and like looking and, and seeing those roots that you don't know are really mm -hmm. planted down in there. Um, and that was for me. And that was like words that were spoken to me and spoken over me. And, mm -hmm. and because I was past it and I was like, I haven't thought of these things or I haven't thought of these hurts or things that hurt me that I didn't realize even hurt me because it hurt somebody else, but through them being affected, it hurt me. I pushed mm -hmm. those things aside. And I kept moving on with my life. Mm -hmm. And through this, that process in that 12 week study, like with a group of people, I was able to process some of these things and the Lord revealed things to me of like, wow, this is something that's holding you back from being all in with me and having yeah. just a fullness, that fullness that, that Christ talks about, like having a fullness of him. And I was like, these roots were holding me down, but I didn't realize it until I oh. walked through this curriculum and like things from 10 years before, like words that were spoken to me, like the Lord was like, you need to forgive this person. And I was like, oh my gosh, I do need to forgive mm, this person. I didn't even yeah. think of this. So that's what freedom is, is it's just a, a curriculum that you walk through and it takes these roots and it helps you pull them out. And then like anything, like any habits, you don't just need to pull something out, but then you need to water it with something. Uh, so that's replacing it. Yeah. it with scripture, yeah. replacing it with the word and, and being invested into the Lord, like really pursuing him. Uh, so for our listeners, that's what freedom mm. is. And like yeah. for you, that's a brave thing because like you really don't know until you're in it what it's what it's all about. You're kind of like, oh, this is something and it sounds good. Uh, and But there's so many question marks. Even then going to the conference, you're like, I don't even really know what this is going to be like. Uh, and the Lord just meets you in the middle of it all, which is mm. so beautiful. So that's such a brave thing to step into that freedom group um, like that. Because again, some people are like, yeah, I know I have these hurts. Some people are like, I don't really know what's in there, and God just pulls at it all, and and, and the Holy Spirit just really doesn't work. So uh, that was that's incredible uh, for you to do that. Once you decided to go all in, like I think sometimes it's easy to sit in church, and like you're a yep. pastor, I'm sure you've had a lot of people who are like, oh man, I am on yep. fire, I am committed, we're totally doing this thing, and then you you go home and normal life still happens. I've I've done and, it, yep. and you aren't actually yep. all in, but we've seen the change in you. We've seen the things that God has done in your life. So how did you hold yourself accountable for saying, yeah, I'm all in, and then actually walking that out? Yeah, well, I think I've I've kind of said that prayer a lot before when, when they kind of had those calls before, um, but I'm not sure that it really was the same as this time. I think part of it was a different mindset. I was in a season ready for growth because I was preparing for freedom, and I really, if I was like, if I'm doing freedom, I want this to make the, hmm. the most of this that yeah. I can. So like my mindset was there and then starting freedom, you kind of like, well, if you want to get out of it, you kind of have no choice to be all in yeah. with it. And that's what I wanted. Um, I've heard so many people talk about freedom conference and freedom group. And um, it just, I didn't know what to expect, but I just knew if I, if I was going to do this, I had to be all in yeah, there. So good. this is the perfect time to go in all over the place. Yep. yep. I love that. And that's that's a challenge um, that we give as a church. And Pastor <laughs> Pastor here at Victory Church gives that often, like all in. And, and I'm very, very guilty of that, of being like, yep, this is, this is my time. I'm doing it. Yeah. And then you really don't take next step. Like you're just like, okay, um, uh, okay, I'm back to doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I remember for me, like, I remember when I did that, he was like one year of your life, just one year. One year. And I promise you're not going to regret it. Like if you give the Lord one year and you take these steps, if you're giving and you're praying and you're in your word. And I was like, finally one time I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And it was a new year. It was a new year, 20, I don't remember what the year was, but I was like, okay, like I'm going to read my Bible this year, the entire thing. I've said this for years and I started it and. I've read it in like patches, but I was like, I've never actually done this. And like actually being all in. And that was how I was staying committed. I was like, I'm going to stay on a plan. Mm -hmm. And if I saw I got behind on a day, I was like, that's not happening again. Now I'm going to get four days ahead. And like, just like really being intentional. Um, like, that's so good. Like, I want to encourage people. Um, that was a great point you made, Kelly. Like, yeah. so many people are like, yeah, I want this. And then they kind of lose it. Like, stay it. And I that's normal. You. It's yeah. very, very normal, yep. I think. And I so there's no condemnation in no, that. You know, I, I think, did it probably seven times or so. Yeah, I think we all do that. And yep. I think that that's why it's so beautiful and why we get to, you know, hear Sarah's story. Because it's like, you you were all in and then you 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 were committed. Yep. You committed to that. So let's talk a little bit about Freedom Conference and mm -hmm. like what you actually discovered about you and what God showed you and then how he brought freedom for you. Yeah, so first I just want to say going through the group, um, you know, you don't, like Austin was saying, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going to come up. Yeah. And I think uh, in the past when like hard times happen, like, you know, you deal with it, you process it, but then you're like, okay, well, you got to move on. You can't stay here forever. Hmm. But I didn't realize that moving on is not the same as healing yep. from it. And so yep. in freedom, oh, wow. like, it's it's just like, Oh, I moved on from that, but I didn't actually do the healing work. Yep. So it had to bring all that back up, which was painful. Um, but that's how you heal from it. So at Freedom Conference, <clears throat> I went all into that too. Again, not knowing, having any idea what that was going to be like and what God was going to do during that weekend. Um, but I just, you know, I surrendered a lot. I had an open heart and wanted to truly surrender. So I surrendered from shame and really shame and guilt and rejection. And one of the biggest things was fear, yeah. which ironically is what held me back from doing yep. freedom and being all in um, a lot of the other times. Um, and ironically, Austin, you know, <laughs> you were the one who led that whole talk on fear. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Full which circle. Yep. It really was. And that was kind of my breakthrough. Like you had said, like, what are you afraid of? Yep. And I, I wrote down, I'm afraid of being alone. Mm -hmm. And so I went up to for prayer you know i surrendered so much fear in my life but i surrendered just feelings of not being seen known or loved like in kind of a more intimate way yeah. and during that it just felt like such a release and a breakthrough and then um when i was reflecting on that after conference though i realized that <clears throat> i thought that those feelings of not being seen, known, and loved um, in a deeper way. It's related to my singleness and just like not having someone to share life with. Um, but what God revealed to me just a couple of days after is it's actually a deeper root than that. Mm -hmm. And um, that is part of it, sure, but it's actually an identity issue because if you're not living in the identity of Christ and that he sees you, he knows you, he loves you, he cares for you, you're going to run into the identity issue and you're going to yeah. look for those things from other people. And I realized that I need to work on this right now or else I'm going to bring this into marriage someday. Yeah. And that is not what I want to do. Wow. So right from then, I was like talking about um, or doing affirmations in the morning. I am seen, mm -hmm. I am known, I love, mm -hmm. because that's what God's word says. Yep. Um, and um, I am chosen, I am understood, I am wanted. And so it went from living up of a place of living loved again, so that before I walk out of the door, I know I'm all of those things. And when I go to meet somebody, um, I'm not looking for and craving for their attention, their approval, their worth. I already am that. Yeah. And um, I'm going and I'm, I'm praying, I'm living out of overflow of hope, love, joy, and peace. Um, for those people. And if, if they bless me in return, that's awesome, but yeah. I'm not going there for a blessing. And it was just honestly this huge perspective shift mm. that really kind of changed it all yeah. for the next bit after freedom. Wow. That is awesome. So looking back, what's something now you would tell yourself before this? Like think back to a day where you were like, wow, I'm really in this rut and like, I'm really feeling mm. this. 
Like I'm feeling the weight of singleness. I'm feeling the weight of, I don't know who I am. I don't, nobody loves these kind of feelings. Like where you're at now, what the Holy Spirit's doing in your life. Like what would you tell maybe a listener who might be feeling that right now? What would you tell them? Yeah, so I think one of the the biggest lies that was on repeat of all that is like, you must be doing something wrong or there's mm. there's something wrong with Ooh, you. That's deep. And Satan used that over and over and over again. And what's different now is I recognize it as a lie much quicker. Mm. And I can be like, that's not what God says. Yep. God says that yeah. I'm seen, known, and loved, and deeply cared about. God says that I have a purpose and... um and here on mission for him. And so I recognize lies quicker and I would tell, you know, I tell myself, what does God say? Mm. And, and how does he care about you? Yeah. And um, what are your, what do your friends say about you? Yeah. They don't say that. Yeah. That is a lie from hell. And the yeah. enemy has to flee in Jesus name. So yeah. I just played the blood of Jesus all over the place um, now. And that's something I learned to do. I learned to battle it out. Um, spiritually um because i have authority over over satan because of the blood of jesus wow that's awesome so now, good because of this shift in you you've seen opportunities the lord has given you to minister to other people mm -hmm. share some of those with yeah, us yeah this has been incredible so just after freedom conference and just being filled with the holy spirit I am just a lot bolder and braver and have more confidence because I know who I am in Christ mm -hmm. and I know what he, how he made me and what he made me to do. So, you know, what I learned through this is my ministry. It's what I was doing before, but I didn't see it as ministry mm -hmm. is to care for people, to see people and encourage people. Um, and so like the day after freedom at someone, uh, someone came up to me at church and she just was kind of feeling heavy. I was like, can I just, can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. And so I prayed for her. I'm bolder with praying for people, sending people texts, um, just of encouragement. And they've just said like, oh my goodness, like I really just needed that. Like, how did you know I was struggling with that? I was like, it was the Lord. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy, when you start listening to the Holy Spirit and then you almost get that validation of like, that's what that people need it. You heard that, right? And you obeyed and you did it. Mm -hmm. It makes you one, um, listen and obey quicker. Yeah. Um, so all of that's been awesome. Um, when Pam Seberg um, talked about hope for week one of Advent, um, I just felt like there were a couple people who needed to hear that. So I sent it to them and somebody replied back who I didn't even know if they were a Christian or not. She just said, oh my goodness, I needed that so much. And that wow. gave me the confidence that like God has me. Um, and then from there, just taking more next brave steps. So yeah. um, one, being on this podcast, this is <laughs> yeah, not yeah. in my comfort zone, but God said someone needs to hear your story and yeah. someone needs to know that they're seen, known, yeah. and loved. But someone needs to know that it's okay if you're a little nervous or scared to take that next step, but God's going to bless it. And it's okay to just raise your hand, even if you're scared, take a scared next step. And then um, one of the cool things too is... Um, in uh, a week from now, so soon, I'm actually going to start leading a small group. Um, oh, that's awesome. And I'm that's going amazing. to just create this awesome community um, of ladies and help them find their people and build community. Um, and without um, this season of brave and all in and breakthrough and knowing my identity in Christ, I couldn't be the leader I am yeah. right now in 2024. Oh, that's awesome. So you said... Bravery was your word uh, for part of 2023 uh, last year. Now, what's the Lord doing in your life? What's your word for this season now that you're walking into? Yeah, so my word for 2024 is expectant. Mm. I am expectant wow. and believing for God's goodness, His abundance, um, continued health, and that I can live on mission for Him and just say, stay expectant for what He's going to do see the evidence that he is working. I am definitely expecting for a husband and um, for, for answers. So single men listening. Uh, Listen, yeah. Sarah is single and ready to mingle. <laughs> um, oh. But just praying for answered prayers and um, just walking in obedience yeah. with God. And Amen. I, I just, you know, this whole season of Brave just created a whole new path and a whole yeah. new um, bold Sarah, um, and I'm excited to share that with the with the world and 
what the Lord has for me. Hey, thank you, Sarah, for being here today and sharing your story. Uh, that's yeah. our hope and our prayer is through every single one of these podcasts that somebody's able to connect uh, with this story and and just be encouraged that God loves them and take a next step. So thank you for being here today, Sarah. Uh, and thank you, Kelly, for being here as a co-host. Yeah, what a great thanks time. Thanks for having me. And thanks again, yes, Sarah, for being brave and yep, stepping out. It's such an inspiration for all of us. Uh, yep, we are expecting with me. you this year. Amen. Uh, Amen. So Amen. So Amen. Our hope and our prayer is that through each of these episodes that somebody feels encouraged uh, and that God loves them to take a next step. So thank you for listening today. Uh, and listeners, we hope that you join us next week for a brand new episode. Episode. Be blessed. Thank you for joining us on this episode of This Is My Story. Hearing these incredible accounts of God's work in our lives reminds us of the enduring power of faith. If you've been moved by these stories, don't forget to subscribe on your preferred podcast platform and on YouTube. And don't forget to share the inspiration with others who might need it. This Is My Story is recorded at Victory Church in the heart of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. You can learn more about This Is My Story and Victory Church in the show notes. Thank you for listening and be blessed.